Welcome to day 82 of our Bible reading plan. Today we're reading Leviticus chapter 15, Proverbs chapter 11, Mark chapter 11 verse 1 to verse 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 23 to verse 24, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 4, and Psalms chapter 82. We're reading from the Berean Standard Bible, Leviticus chapter 15. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Say to the Israelites, When any man has a bodily discharge, the discharge is unclean. The uncleanness is from his discharge, whether his body allows the discharge to flow or blocks it, so his discharge will bring about uncleanness. Any bed on which the man with the discharge lies will be unclean, and any furniture on which he sits will be unclean. Anyone who touches his bed must wash his clothes and bath with water, and it will be unclean until evening. Whoever sits on the furniture on which the man with the discharge was sitting must wash his clothes and bath with water, and it will be unclean until evening. Whoever touches the body of the man with a discharge must wash his clothes and bath with water, and it will be unclean until evening. If the man with the discharge spits on one who is clean, that person must wash his clothes and bath with water, and it will be unclean until evening. Any saddle on which the man with the discharge rides will be unclean. Whoever touches anything that was under him will be unclean until evening, and whoever carries such things must wash his clothes and bath with water, and it will be unclean until evening. If the man with the discharge touches anyone without first rinsing his hands with water, the one who was touched must wash his clothes and bath with water, and it will be unclean until evening. Any clay pot that the man with the discharge touches must be broken, and any wooden utensil must be rinsed with water. When the man has been cleansed from his discharge, he must count off seven days for his cleansing wash his clothes and bath himself in fresh water and he shall be clean on the eighth day he is to take two turtle doves or two young pigeons come before the lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting and give them to the priest the priest is to sacrifice them one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering in this way the priest will make atonement for the man before the lord because of his discharge when a man has an emission of semen, he must bath his whole body with water, and he will be unclean until evening. Any clothing or leather on which there is an emission of semen must be washed with water, and it will remain unclean until evening. If a man lies with a woman, and there is an emission of semen, both must bath with water, and they will remain unclean until evening. When a woman has a discharge consisting of blood from her body, she will be unclean due to her menstruation for seven days, and anyone who touches her will be unclean until evening. Anything on which she lies or sits during her menstruation will be unclean, and anyone who touches her bed must wash his clothes and bath with water, and it will be unclean until evening. Whoever touches any furniture on which she was sitting must wash his clothes and bath with water, and it will be unclean until evening. And whether it is a bed or furniture on which she was sitting, whoever touches it will be unclean until evening. If a man lies with her and her menstrual flow touches him, it will be unclean for seven days, and any bed on which he lies will become unclean. When a woman has a discharge of her blood for many days at a time other than her menstrual period, or if it continues beyond her period, she will be unclean all the days of her unclean discharge, just as she is during the days of her menstruation. Any bed on which she lies, or any furniture on which she sits during the days of her discharge will be unclean, like her bed during her menstrual period. Anyone who touches these things will be unclean. He must wash his clothes and bath with water, and he will be unclean until evening. When a woman is cleansed of her discharge, she must count off seven days, and after that, she will be ceremonially clean. On the eighth day, she is to take two turtle doves or two young pigeons, 
and bring them to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The priest is to sacrifice one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for her before the Lord for her unclean discharge. You must keep the children of Israel separate from their uncleanness so that they do not die by defiling my tabernacle, which is among them. This is the law of him who has a discharge of the man who has an emission of semen, whereby he is unclean, of a woman in a menstrual period, of any male or female who has a discharge, and of a man who lies with an unclean woman. Now we're reading Proverbs chapter 11. These honest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but an accurate weight is his delight. When pride comes, disgrace follows, but with humility comes wisdom. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the perversity of the faithless destroys them. Riches are worthless in the day of wrath, but righteousness brings deliverance from death. The righteousness of the blameless directs their path, but the wicked fall by their own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright delivers them, but the faithless are trapped by their own desires. When the wicked man dies, his hope perishes, and the hope of his strength vanishes. The righteous man is delivered from trouble. In his place, the wicked man goes in. With his mouth, the ungodly man destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge, the righteous are rescued. When the righteous strive, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. By the blessing of the upright, a city is built up. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is torn down. Whoever shows contempt for his neighbor lacks judgment, but a man of understanding remains silent. A gossip reveals a secret, but a trustworthy person keeps a confidence. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but with many counselors comes deliverance. He who puts up security for a stranger will surely suffer, but the one who hates indebtedness is secure. A gracious woman attains honor, but ruthless men gain only wealth. A kind man benefits himself, but a cruel man brings trouble on himself. The wicked man earns an empty wage, but he who sows righteousness reaps a true reward. Genuine righteousness leads to life, but the pursuit of evil brings death. The perverse in heart are an abomination to the Lord, but the blameless in their work are his delight. Be assured that the wicked will not go unpunished but the offspring of the righteous will escape. Like a gold ring in a pig's mouth is a beautiful woman who lacks discretion. The desire of the righteous leads only to good, but the hope of the wicked brings wrath. One gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds what is right, only to become poor. A general soul will prosper, and he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. The people will curse the order of grain, but blessing will crown the one who sells it. He who searches out good finds favor, but evil will come to him who seeks it. He who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like foliage. He who brings trouble on his house will inherit the wind, and the fool will be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. If the righteous receive their due on earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner. Our next reading is Mark chapter 11, verse 1 to verse 14. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent out two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. And as soon as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it and will return it shortly. So they went and found the coat outside in the street, tied at a doorway. They untied it and some who were standing there asked, why are you untying the coat? The disciples answered as Jesus had instructed them, and the people gave them permission. Then they led the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many in the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut from the fields. The ones who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, when they had left Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if there was any fruit on it. But when he reached it, he found nothing on it except leaves, since it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat of your fruit again. And his disciples heard this statement. Now we're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 to 24. I call God as my witness that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth, not that we lord it over your faith, but we are fellow workers with you for your joy, because it is by faith that you stand firm. Our next reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 4. So I made up my mind not to make another painful visit to you. For if I grieve you, who is left to cheer me but those whom I have grieved? I wrote as I did, so that on my arrival, I would not be saddened by those who ought to make me rejoice. I had confidence in all of you that you would share my joy, for through many tears, I wrote you out of great distress and anguish of heart, not to grieve you, but to let you know how much I love you. Now we're going to read the last passage for today, and that's Psalms chapter 82. God presides in the divine assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. Defend the cause of the weak and fatherless. Uphold the rights of the afflicted and oppressed. Rescue the weak and needy. Save them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know or understand. They wonder in the darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaking. I have said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. But like mortals, you will die. And like rulers, you will fall. Arise, O God. Judge the earth. For all the nations are your inheritance. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word.